Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. The three keys to your success is just moments away. Here's your host, Brian Kelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. We have an amazing, amazing show tonight, and we have a guest that is coming to us live all the way from the French Alps. That's right. It is very brutally early in the morning there, 2.30 in the morning. So show your love when you come on and watch, and uh, as you're listening as well, go ahead and share some love, some likes, some comments. Let us know where you're coming in from. Uh, amazing young man who's accomplished a lot, and I can't wait to dig deep to find out his secrets to success in just a moment. The Mind Body Business Show, what is that all about? It is wrapped around what I call the three pillars of success. And what I found in the last decade or so after just studying only successful people is, you know, I wanted to know what made these successful people tick, what got them to the levels of success that they have. And three patterns kept coming up to the top. And you might have guessed what those are. Mind being mindset. Uh, each one to a to a person has a very positive and very powerful and most of all flexible mindset. And then body. Each and every individual that I studied took care of themselves physically, both inside and out. And by that I mean they exercised on a regular basis and they took care of themselves nutritionally. And then there's business. Now business is multi multi multifaceted. There's sales, marketing, team building, systematizing, leadership, the list goes on and on. And the thing is, is uh, it's very difficult for one person to master every skill set necessary to not only develop a successful business, but to have a thriving and maintainable and sustainable business and one that you can continue to increase and scale even further. So the key skill set there that each of these individuals had was that of leadership. So they had mastered mindset, taking care of their body and leadership. And they had also several other traits, skills uh, in the business realm as well. Each of us are unique in those areas. And so with those, they achieved massive, uh, massive success. And our, our guest who's coming on, Tyler S. Clark, is no different. No different. He's, uh, he's crushing it and he's doing it all from the French Alps. I love this. He's from Philadelphia originally. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that story in just a little bit. Uh, another phenomenal trait I noticed of very successful people is to a person, they are all very voracious readers, readers of books, books that actually empower them to improve themselves through business and through personal uh, means as well. And with that, I'd like to segue over very quickly to a little segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Yes, there you see it. Bookmarks, uh, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And by the way, for those of you watching right now, even if you're listening, please resist the temptation to open up another tab and type in you know, website URLs and information that are provided here on this show, especially when Tyler starts talking. And the reason is this, is the magic happens in the room. So you wanna stay in the room and I, I get it, it's a virtual room, but that is all about having your attention on the topic at hand. And many like to multitask and that's usually not a good idea when, it's coming to, when it comes to uh, ingesting and retaining extremely valuable information. And I will tell you this without any hesitation, my guest experts have immense value to a person. Tyler is no different. I cannot wait. And so instead of doing that, rather take out that very old fashioned thing that you may remember from days gone by. It's a, called a piece of paper. And uh, with that very old fashioned thing, there's also another thing you need is a writing instrument, like a pen or pencil. I know I'm being a little funny here, but Go ahead. I literally do this myself while on the show. I'm hosting, directing, producing, acting, everything, and I'm still taking notes as well. So I never ask anyone to do anything I don't do, and I will be taking notes. I can even prove it later uh, if necessary. But Reach Your Peak Library, what is that? That is a website I put together, had it put together, and I'm not kidding, with you in mind, because I was not one of those voracious readers, not until about a decade ago, and then I started reading. 
And once I learned that there was this, this way to read by listening through Audible, that's when I began really hitting the books because reading a physical book or something online or anything that caused my eyes to strain, I did not last long and it just fatigued me. And I, I did not enjoy reading whatsoever. And once I learned uh, about listening to books, then, you know, open the barn doors. I started listening everywhere in the car, in the house, everywhere I was. And so I began reading voraciously and I put this site together because what this site represents are about 40 books of books that I have read personally and I vet. Not every book I've read is on this list. And these are here for you, the entrepreneur, the person looking to advance themselves in success, no matter where you are. If you're super successful now, odds are you will find a book in here that you have not read yet that will speak to you, that will be the one that's right for you at this time. If you're just starting out, every one of these books is applicable. Uh, just read the description on this page, grab it, and it takes you straight to Amazon. This is not here for money-making purposes. It is here to give you a gift, a gift of saving you time in trying to figure out what a good book would be to read. Now, I can't guarantee it's gonna have the same impact on you as it did on me. We're all at different stages in our business and personal lives, but at least the odds are greater. <laughs> so reach your peak library.com, write that down on that old fashioned piece of paper and using that old fashioned writing instrument called a pen or pencil. And guess what time it is now? I don't like to string these things out too long because this show is about our guest. So let's bring this wonderful young man onto the show. Here we go. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And oh, he's down there. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. The one, the only, Mr. Tyler S. Clark. Yes. All the way from the French Alps. I cannot thank you enough for holding true to your commitment. You've got to be like going, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. It's 2 a.m. It, it sounded like a good idea when I first signed on, right? <laughs> Look, I'm I'm absolutely uh, honored to be here, Brian, uh, regardless of the fact that it's in the wee hours in the French Alps. I, uh, I made a commitment and I knew what I was getting myself into. And it's an absolute honor and pleasure to uh, be on the program with you here. So thank you for having me. Uh, and you know what? That It just comes to mind. That's another. That's a very big trait of highly successful people is they honor their commitments. And I'm not kidding. And so, you know, it's obvious and we'll find out in depth <laughs> that you have attained some a great deal of success, a high level. And there's reasons for that. And that's one of them because you're true to your commitments. That's uh, very important uh, to all successful people. Uh, and before I formally introduce you, Tyler, real quick, I want to remind everyone watching that if you stay on to the end of the show, you will have the opportunity to win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort. And that is brought to you all compliments of our good friends up there of the big insider secrets. And they are an amazing company. They provide this for us on our show. We give away a trip every single week. And yes, I do believe at some point you'll be able to cash in on those those tickets <laughs> and that vacation stay and you will be able to move about the country uh, and the globe freely. And so be sure to stay on and we will tell you exactly how to enter. We announced that near the end. But now for the most important part of the show, this young man right here, Tyler S. Clark is a serial entrepreneur. After successfully adding six figures to his accounting firm two years straight with digital marketing and successfully selling it, he launched his digital marketing agency, Dream Firms, the number one digital marketing agency for accounting firms. I love how it's niched down. He also is the chief marketing officer for Clescent. I hope I say that right. A luxury <laughs> Apple Watch strap company. So it's a strap that goes with the watch that he has doubled its revenue in just one year. That's pretty impressive. And Tyler is an avid digital marketer, as you're going to find out, a ClickFunnels certified partner and a dream car winner. We might find out a little more about that. What does that mean? Recently, he was recognized, get this, as one of the top 15 ClickFunnels affiliates in the world. And ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of ClickFunnels affiliates. I know this personally, and that is quite, quite an achievement. He also successfully funded his first company on Kickstarter, raising over $26,000. So now 
officially welcome to the show my man tyler clark how are you doing i'm doing very well and i feel like i should hire you as my hype man brian because man <laughs> i'm fired up right there that was awesome thank you cool anything i can do to help wake you up brother <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so here, you know what? That's a very impressive uh, bio. Uh, it gives a, us a great idea of the fact that you're a hustler, and I mean that in the in the best sense, right? You get out, you get it done. Uh, you're you're successfully executing everything you do. It doesn't matter from where. Now you're in France. You start in Philadelphia, and you're successful wherever you drop. And that's because much of what you do is digital, which is a great lesson for many people to learn right now in cases like this, in times like this. The people that are online, digital marketers like yourself and myself are the ones that are thriving in this environment, not suffering like unfortunately so many are. And so it's something that all of you watching and listening, take this deep to heart. Listen to Tyler very intently. If you don't have a digital side of a business, a, a kind of digital run business that's all digital, then you want to really listen closely. And I think Tyler has some resources for you near the end of the show that you'll definitely want to take a look at and this, this gentleman has helped a lot of people. I was uh, I was stalking him earlier and figuring out and finding out more about him. Uh, and so this is an amazing guy, and I can't wait to share his brilliance with you. The thing is, everything we saw or everything you just heard is phenomenal. But what I like to do, Tyler, is I like to take it another step. Please. Uh, because I'm a firm believer that the foundation of everyone's either success or lack of it all comes from the noggin, that thing up there. And what I like to do is kind of get a look into that big, beautiful brain of yours and find out what it is that's helping you to get where you are today. So like in the morning, like to, like this morning, <laughs> when you got up, like, and you know, the, the, the day is ahead of you. Some days are harder than others. Others are easier. This one might be a little harder because it was so brutally early. What is it that's going through your mind when you wake up, when you come to your conscious, you know, you, the day's in front of you? What is it that really motivates and drives you day after day to continue to go on this entrepreneurial grind that we're on? Well, uh, you know, that's a that's a very interesting question, Brian, and and I appreciate you asking it. And to me, it comes down to impact. It comes down to legacy. It comes down to choosing to lead and live a life of significance. And that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But you you had something earlier uh, when we first started the show that I want to kind of key in on where you said, well, you, you honor your commitments. And some people don't really necessarily feel the need to do that sometimes, or they will come up with reasons why they don't need to do that. And if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, I believe that you are usually one of two things, or you are at best, both of them. You are someone who identifies and solves problems. And when you're looking to set reasonable expectations for your clients, and I believe that mismanaged expectations are the root of all failure and disappointment. Well, if you can identify and solve a problem, you effectively have a business as long as you can do it profitably. Okay. And then the second part of that is that, well, if you can do that and you can do something when you say you're going to do it, you are also a professional. And so if you can be a, what I like to say is a professional entrepreneur, you'll be able to lead a life of significance relatively easily. And that starts by just recognizing, okay, I can be productive. And if I start my day a certain way by just I always think just knocking one thing off your checklist, right? One thing that you know that if I can just do this one thing day over day, stretching, meditating, creating my checklist, making my bed, like I think so so oftentimes, Brian, we, we imagine that we have to do all these enormous things. And in reality, what we have to do is we have to stack up little things over and over and over and over again. And then they turn out to be magical things with consistent effort and, and enough foresight. So I know that was a bit of a, a long winded answer, but if I had to just kind of say, well, you know, how do you start your day? I start my day with just a relatively easy task and that allows me to build momentum through the rest of the day. I love that. Cause that just takes the pressure off of a person that has set all of these goals for themselves and they want to, you know, solve the world's problems after five minutes of being awake in the morning. 
and you know take on too much. I love that. And uh, I'm, I was trying to think of the book that I read and you probably read it too, where, you know, it's all about doing the little things and they stack up, like you said, to big results. And it just takes time, commitment, discipline, repetition. We have some wonderful people coming on here. This is my buddy, Jason Nass from Facebook saying, woohoo. He's excited. Oh, you're going to love this one, Tyler. Here we go. The <laughs> goat. The What's goat. up, Ine? What's up, girl? What's up, bro? We call each other bro. I know it sounds weird, but <laughs> thank awesome. you for chiming in, Ine. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And uh, GOAT, for those of you that may not be familiar with that acronym, because it's a somewhat, a relatively new acronym that came across primarily in the sporting world, I think, is greatest of all time. So it doesn't mean that he's a bad person. It means he's a good person. Yes, I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was just too too easy. And we have the big insider secrets. Our sponsor is on, and he's very excited to hear about ClickFunnels and how you've crushed it there. We are definitely going to get into that. I promise everybody. And we're going to go through a little bit more of a mindset, maybe talk a little bit about, about body. And then when we hit business, then we're going to be in business, so to speak. So here we go. Um, I'm guessing that... Well, I'll ask you, are you, do you consider yourself to be an avid reader? Yes. And um, what's interesting about that question, Brian, is that um, I think a lot of people often associate like reading with specifically like business literature. And I do enjoy business literature, of course, but I'm a huge fantasy and sci-fi. Like I love fantasy books and sci-fi and, and that's my brain's way of being able to turn off and honestly just like relax and get to sleep. So I do love reading. And the book I think we were referencing earlier is Atomic Habits. That's, ah, that's, that's the it. book I give to essentially all my clients. Um, and the, and the, the major quote from that that I love is you don't rise to your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Wow. And so when you have the right systems in place, ultimately you get what you're searching for in life. Um, but yeah, so um, yes, I do love to read. Yeah, and combine that that very quote with Michael Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited that talks all about systems. And I'll never forget reading this, uh, listening to it, because I listened to all my books. And when he said these words, he goes, basically, if you have no systems in your business, you have no business. And at that moment, when I first read it, this was going back some time. It was like, bam, <laughs> like, uh-oh, I better get busy. I got to figure this stuff out. And <laughs> thank God since then, I've, I've created quite a few systems and they're working quite nicely. He's absolutely right. Uh, if, if you don't have systems, you're more of a entrepreneur, even more than a solopreneur, because you're going to burn out way, way soon if uh, you don't have systems. So yeah, Atomic Habits, that was it. Thank you for reminding me. And everyone else, because a powerful, powerful book. Um, so highly recommend. So everybody write that down. Atomic Habits. Do you remember the author? James oh. Clear. Of course he remembers the author. <laughs> yes, it's his go-to book. Yes. Uh oh, wait a minute. There we go. All right. He's got it this right This is the uh, a companion journal. So for anyone that's into journaling or looking for something that's a little bit more than just your standard notebook, there's some really cool features in this. I've never been much of a journaler, but this book has, this specific one is kind of cracked the code for me. Sweet. And I just love how you, right off the bat, you're saying, uh, keep your life simple, start it simple. Don't, don't give yourself too high of expectations. That's what I'm reading into it to help you to be able to achieve each goal. Uh, you know, like micro goals and, you know, make them achievable. Uh, don't make them too hard. <laughs> and, uh, and every time you do it, like you said, you're stacking pebbles and, Pretty soon you're going to be, you know, up in the in the clouds with all those pebbles that have you stocked up over the days, weeks, months, and years. It does take time. Um, and you living in the French Alps, I'm I'm assuming I don't know, maybe you don't, uh, but I would guess there's access to some pretty darn good skiing out there, snow skiing, <laughs> and uh, higher elevation, and all that. So there's probably a lot of opportunity to keep physically fit. Uh, how important is it to you? on both a business and a personal level to keep up your level of fitness to the highest you possibly can. You know, I, uh, this is, this, this question is also very interesting from the standpoint that 
it was something that was not as big of a priority for me until relatively recently. Um, I don't. I I grew up in uh, practicing the martial arts with my father. I became a black belt in Tang Soo Do, played varsity basketball and and football, and and then uh, in college I became very uh, invested in Tai Chi. And then as I got into my working career, um, as I think for a lot of people, oftentimes that those physical activities end up taking a back seat because of how hard you find yourself working and how tired you become. And also it has a lot to do with your diet, as you indicated in your opener, right? It's not just how you're exercising. It's also what you're taking in. So <clears throat> long story short, I weighed about 185 pounds in high school. And uh, that was always sort of like my ideal weight, right? Uh, for most people, I think that's kind of how they, they envision it, or at least for me. And <clears throat> fast forward to about, um, about six months ago, I've been, I had started to experience a lot of, um, joint pain, um, shoulder pain, pain in my hands. And I, hard to figure out the reason, right? It's just, you know, blood tests, not sure. Hmm. And so <clears throat> I, uh, I made a, a decision with my fiance that we would, um, go through a detox. We would change our diet regimen regime, excuse me. And, uh, I lost about 20 pounds, got back down to my ideal weight, have been eating almost six, I won't say exclusively vegetables, but a heavily plant-based diet. And, uh, I've, I've, I maybe work out or stretch three, four times a week. I, I really don't overdo it. It allows me to, to get a sweat going and stay limber and uh and my pain i won't say it's completely gone away but it's certainly lessened i mean when you lose 20 pounds like imagine you carry a 20 pound weight around for yeah. your entire day it just spread all that weight out over the rest of your body and you're gonna you're gonna quickly realize how much energy you're losing and my energy level since then and the things i've been able to accomplish in my business are just like it's crazy the difference like it's 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 so hard to explain until you experience it. But once you experience it, you, you literally will go like, I can never go back to that. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, how many times, so there's all these, uh, yo-yo dieters. There's also yo-yo gym rats. They go yep. in, they work out, uh, they fall off the, the workout wagon. Like I like to call it. I used to be a, a, in fitness for seven years. I was a certified personal trainer, all that good stuff. And it is so true that, you know, everyone's taking, medications or they're uh, ingesting high doses of caffeine and energy drinks to get that energy when really all they need to do is exercise. It's got the greatest side effects you could ever have in, and it, they're all natural and uh, they're all beneficial. All of them. Uh, you might get a little sore. Your muscles get sore, get over it. You'll get past it. They will, they will not be sore forever. If you keep going three or four times a week, whatever works for you, all of you, it, it doesn't mean, guys, that you have to go and work out seven days a week, three or four hours at a time, twice a day, like Arnold did back in the day. I don't know if that's exactly true, but they worked out a lot. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do this to become an Arnold Schwarzenegger unless you really want to be one. Uh, you just need to keep everything going, the system running and fine tune. I like to say the mind and body are a team because, remember, the mind is the foundation for your current situation right now. Um, sorry, it's no one else's fault. You got to look in the mirror on this one and what's going on in that wonderful, beautiful brain of yours is what's uh, resulting in where you are today. But for those of you that um, want to write the ship, get that going and your body like Tyler has been doing and the mind and body are a team. And more importantly, they are your team. And when any member of a team isn't pulling its weight, the team as a whole suffers. And so with that uh, and then you got business, which we'll get into in a moment, but appreciate that because uh, yeah, nutrition is actually, I almost cringe to say this from being a personal trainer, but nutrition can be more important than working out. If you I find agree. you cannot work out and you're not, you're, you're, you're time limited, th there's really no excuse for it. And I don't want to give people excuses for it, but if you're going to put more importance on one over the other, then please do it on the nutrition side. Please do it on the nutrition side. Oh, this is weird. I've got a, 
comment from my own Facebook page, someone saying my type of interview, go Brian Kelly. Oh, it's probably one of my apprentices that's logged into my, that's so funny. I have to show this. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I can't. Hyping yourself up, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is awesome. Uh, and then, uh, earlier, Big Insider Secrets was saying shine, I can't, shine shoe saves lives. Yeah, I think he was talking about, when we were talking about uh, Atomic Habits, that topic. And then here's your, your BFF. Thanks for sharing that. T seems like a shift and a purposeful focus on balance. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we're going on and on. All right. We're going to keep moving on. So um, definitely uh, physical fitness. You heard it right here. Tyler S. Clark. Very, very successful. We're going to dive into that as well. Um, so you've built a business, then you've sold it. And then you, uh, so your business was originally in the accounting realm. Is that true? Correct. So and then um, you figured out how to grow it through digital marketing and then sold that business and became a digital marketing firm for accounting firms. Am I getting that correct? Correct. So there's okay. a, there's a little bit of a story behind it, of course. Would you like me to kind of go into it a little bit? Please do. Please do. Okay. So, um, essentially, uh, what ended up happening is I was a little bit born into the accounting spaces. You know, we don't always choose the circumstances we find ourselves in, but uh, long story short, grandfather was an accountant, very successful accountant in the seventies. He was essentially an enrolled agent, built up a million dollar firm, which was pretty impressive during that time frame. And after he, um, when he, his technique to grow that was using my father, as his sales representative. And the idea of a sales representative for an accounting firm, it was it was very unique for the time at the time, right? It's almost like kind of common knowledge now that you can delegate and manage and have a specific salesperson to go out and find business for you. But my father and uh, he would cold call the market, you would sign up monthly clients, write up clients, and they did fantastic. My father took those techniques, built his own firm, further refined them and honed them. And then he launched a marketing consulting firm known as New Clients Incorporated, the first marketing consulting firm of its kind, specifically for accounting professionals. Now he started that business 30 years ago. I'm 30 years old. So I like to tell everyone there's literally never been a moment in my life where sales and marketing specifically for the accounting industry has not been a part of it. So I, I would like grow up around the dinner table like, mommy, daddy, how do we get our accounting clients better results? <laughs> Those words came out of my mouth. So I, uh, after graduating from college, I joined New Clients Incorporated as a growth consultant and really started to recognize the power of the internet and how things were starting to change and shift and how cold calling, while still a, a very viable tactic even today, there was a different way potentially to be more efficient with your marketing dollars or how you chose to invest certain types of clients. And so what we did is we started to test a little bit of that inside of New Clients Incorporated. And what I did with my father is I said, hey, why don't we start our own accounting firm? We can use it as a hotbed to test new marketing concepts, these new digital strategies that we really want to start to deploy and let's see what happens. And so we did. And um, we grew it very successfully. I was really uh, the equivalent of what my father was for his grandfather. And, and now I was for our accounting firm. And so I've been on the front lines. I know what it's like to talk to small to medium sized business owners of the value of having that accounting, bookkeeping and tax firm in your corner on a year round basis and, and the value of what that can provide to a business when it's done successfully. So, uh, so yeah, we, we, we deployed a lot of different digital strategies. I can talk a little bit more about those if you'd like. And essentially what we did is we realized that almost nobody in the market was doing anything like this. And so we started to package up those ideas, those techniques and strategies and, and brought them to a, to a broader market. Yeah. And, and the answer to, if I want you to go into that, heck yeah. Are you kidding me? Um, is a thing and, and you're, you're being very uh, respectful and I appreciate that because uh, there were some um, preconditions about coming on the show, shall I say. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, I love to really put people like you on a pedestal. People need to know what you do and how to get in contact with you so that they can get the help they need and deserve from people like you. Uh, first, I wanted to ask a real basic question. I love how you've 
targeted it. You're very targeted, focused on the accounting industry for your services. Do you also cater to those outside of that in any way? So this is, uh, I think, one of the trappings of entrepreneurship is that since we can do anything, we often do everything that we possibly can. And I think that's a huge mistake. And one of the best ways to avoid that mistake is to, to be willing to say no. And I often ask my clients when, I'm, when we're engaging in conversations, very simple question, why did you agree to speak with me? Right? There's a lot of people who can teach you about sales and marketing, digital marketing, but you're on the phone with me specifically. And so oftentimes people need to realize that you, you, the people listening right now, you're your own best coach for what works in sales and marketing. Like you say no to thousands of things every single day, every single week, but you say yes to a small fraction of those. And if you just take a minute to say, why am I listening to Brian? Why am I, why did I agree to buy X, Y, or Z? Why did I open that email? And start to just ask why all the time about your buying decisions, what you're saying yes to. And what you'll find is there's usually very common elements that run through all of them. And one of the most common elements is what I like to refer to as relevancy. And relevancy is, well, you're speaking to me, if you're an accounting professional, you're speaking to me because I consciously say no to essentially everybody else, right? I don't break away from this. And that allows me to have a specialty and an expertise that makes me very, very appealing to a smaller subset of people. But that's totally okay, right? Like that's a totally amazing thing to have is you want efficiency in your marketing processes. And you have efficiency when you have a target. And when you have a target, you're more likely to hit it. So again, I, I, I say this from the standpoint that these were things I learned inside of my accounting firm when it was originally, well, we work with small businesses, right? But we had a, a veteran who was doing our processing for our accounting work. And so we realized, well, what if we targeted veteran owned businesses? What if we started to realize the power of reviews? What if we started to use platforms like Bark or Thumbtack where they're already doing the heavy lifting and we can just come in and essentially access the leads. And if we have better messaging, they'll want to work with us. If we have better reviews on the platform, we'll look better than everyone else and they'll be willing to speak with us. And so all of this really just starts to steamroll. It starts to snowball when you start to pay attention to it. And like we said earlier, specifically for, well, how, when you start the day with a task and it builds on itself, it's also true in digital marketing where every single asset, every single win, every single review, every single new platform, every system you build to be able to manipulate or utilize that platform to generate leads, it all builds on itself. And the only way you have increased efficiency in my honest opinion, is when you pick a, a vertical or a niche. Yeah, I love it because uh, how many times have you talked to an entrepreneur and said, so what kind of people do you serve? And their answer is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment, when I hear that answer, I just kind of shake my head inside going, oh, you're going to have a tough road here because it's very important to niche it down. And that's, you know, in going over your bio, that's where I could see that you had done just that. And the cool thing is, like you're saying is focus it and target it. Once you have a target, you have a better opportunity to hit that target. And you know, there, there can be, for those of you that have other businesses in a different genre, you can actually, you know, if you market to just that avatar, we like to call it, or ideal client base, there will be others that will be interested and you just have to make that decision. Are they the right fit for you and your business? But um, many people will just say, well, I will take people outside of my core uh, if they fit, and then that just gives gives them more business uh, if they don't have enough already in their core area already. So just want to put that out there that uh, it's very important. Uh, what Tyler is saying is to be very, very focused in what you do and know who your ideal client is. I mean, detailed. And that's what he has done. And he's very successful. And to get successful in any business, one must be pretty darn good at this thing called marketing. And I have a feeling that this guy right here has found a way and cracked some kind of nut. I, I mean, I know it, there's no question, being the top, what was it, 15 affiliates in the entire ClickFunnels affiliate network. I don't know, there's gotta be 
multiple thousands or tens of thousands of those. Uh, I used to be one as well. I was like, wow, that's impressive. So I'm curious, marketing is the lifeblood of any and all companies, as you know, Tyler, uh, obviously, because you spent a lot of time perfecting that craft. What would you say has been the number one marketing uh, approach that you have utilized to date? Uh, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, like what is the most recent marketing, form of marketing that you've utilized for your company that has worked the best? So <clears throat> I think, uh, well, I'm definitely going to answer the question directly. I, I have no problem sharing my, my best traffic source and my best techniques. I like to say there are no secrets in the information age. Um, and if you think you have secrets, you're, you're fooling yourself. What you need to do is you need to be open and be willing to share things. And um, when you're willing to do that, amazing things happen. So <clears throat> um, when it comes to, to efficient or successful marketing, I like to always tell people there's nothing mythical about it. It's actually extremely methodical. And a lot of people, especially accountants who are highly analytical, they like to follow checklists and procedures. And it's true, there are essentially formulas or things that you just need to understand that go into creating a successful marketing plan and implementing that plan. And to me, it, it comes down to three primary things, okay? We talked about the importance of your market, like actually having a defined market, understanding why you say yes, and it almost ha always has to do with someone is understanding your uniqueness and what makes you special. Right, that's market number one, okay? The second thing that you have to now hone in on is your message. Why should someone listen to you? What is the pain point that you solve, right? If we go back to even what we said just a little while ago, entrepreneurs solve problems. What is the problem that you are solving for that individual, right? What is the major thing? What is the major benefit that you're going to be able to do. And, I, and I'll tell you one of the things I, I love to just reinforce with my clients is that if you're in the service business, like Brian and I are for the most part, we effectively sell the same thing. I sell the same thing as an accounting firm and that might sound strange, but what we sell is an improved quality of life. If I can get you to believe that your quality of life will improve as a result of working with me and my services, whether I'm offering marketing and sales coaching and training and system building in that area of your business, or if I'm offering some form of accounting, bookkeeping and tax help in the finance pillar of your business. We're both working under the assumption that should you choose to do that, if my message resonates with you, the payback of that will be ultimately an improved quality of life. Okay, so again, just to review marketing, if your message matches your market, the final one, if your message is at the right moment in that person's life. So for instance, you may not necessarily want to grow your business right now, although it's hard to find, if you're not growing, you're shrinking, you may not necessarily have an issue related to accounting, bookkeeping, or tax, but then you get a letter from the IRS, but then all of a sudden it's time to file your taxes, but then all of a sudden the moment changes. And if your message is almost omnipresent or constantly in front of that person's ability to now say yes, whether email list, advertising, where they invest their time online, guess what? They're gonna go, I've seen this person. Oh, they've got good reviews. Oh, and again, there are certain elements that go into building trust online that get someone to go from eh, to click, to schedule call, to take their credit card out of their wallet and buy from you. And if you have those elements and you continually build on them and improve them and fine hone them, you get to make the fourth M, right? Marketing, message, moment, you make money. Marketing, message, moment, make money. So that's a very, just like, that's like my, my go-to strategy. Like if you can just understand that, you know, you know basically everything you need to about marketing. Yes, there's fine details. And when it comes to like traffic source, when it comes to how does that, how do you actually attract people to you? Well, go back, go back to studying your market and I'll, and I'll tell you how it works for me. So, and this is effectively how I won the ClickFunnels award. This is, this is our go-to traffic source. My market needs something very specific. They're known as CPE credits, continuing education credits. There's a number of industries that require this. 
okay? And there's a certain number of hours that they need per, per year. Financial planners need it. I believe lawyers need it. I think even nurses need it. I think real estate professionals may need it in certain states. And CPAs need it. Enrolled agents need it. And so they have webinar providers online where you can go and you will put on your webinar your message, okay? That will then give them a free CPE credit for attending your webinar. So you have a very captivated audience. You're building reciprocity into your entire message because they're getting something for free in exchange for giving you their time. They're getting also value from your message if you're coaching and educating them. And then you have a tremendous opportunity at the end to convert them into something meaningful for you and your business. So that's one of, I mean, I've talked about this strategy a lot. Again, there's nothing to hide about it. These companies are widely available. Feel free to come compete against me. Like I really don't care. And um, yeah, like honestly, that's, uh, that's, that's to me one of the top strategies in the game right now. I love it. The four M's uh, and really the, the big home run I think is the attention to detail of creating and giving value. And, you know, you're coming off and giving it for no cost or very little cost initially to wet their whistle, so to speak, to say this Tyler guy, he knows what he's talking about. I want to do more. I want him to take me to the finish line, to the promised land and help me to get past where I'm at today. And that's a, a very, obviously it's a proven strategy. It's yours and it's working. And I've heard this time and time again from many successful entrepreneurs. It's you know, provide value. I've heard recently an interesting thing is happening. I've heard recently some people are like um, shunning the word value and saying that, you know, it's being overused. Well, that's an opinion. And I think it's maybe it's being overused because possibly they're not actually doing the same thing that they should be doing, which is provide value. It, it means different things to different people. But, for you know, in your case, you said it already. Is it targeted? Is it something they need? Is it something they can that will help them get to the point they're looking to get to. Uh, you know, in your case, you're helping them by getting them those credits and that's helping them. And so that's value. <laughs> so if it's targeted towards your market, like you said in the very beginning, so yeah, it, it's a phenomenal sounding system. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, just one thing on, on that point you made about value, right? This is a word that is definitely, I, I, I could say it's almost getting abused, right? <laughs> it's almost the equivalent of like paradigm shift from like a couple of years ago. It's like, okay, like we got to let that term breathe for a little bit. But honestly, you're right. It's, it, it means different things to different people. And I think this is one of the, the major things that you can do with your, with successful marketing is make sure your audience understands what you mean when you use certain terms. So I always clarify it for my audience. I there say value means one thing to me. It's a synonym essentially for results. Like my value is my ability to help you get better results or tangible results. And so when you talk about your value, well, what does that mean? All it means to me is you get results. So I just had to clarify that because I completely agree. And I think if you want to differentiate yourself and still use a powerful term, just give it a little bit more meat. And it, it is being used heavily across many spectrums. And the, the key is, is how is it being used? And so, you know, that's it. You just clarified um, by telling them this is what value means in, in our context, because that's what it is. It's results. If you're not getting results, you're not getting value. And that's really a great definition of the way it should be used uh, is to basically elicit results. I love that. I love that. So let's talk about ClickFunnels a little bit. That's one uh, I got a lot of people are interested in hearing about how you how you did this. So that's a whole different uh, spectrum of value there. There's a whole different audience. It's not accountants per se, unless that's how you targeted this as well. Imagine uh, that. What was the secret sauce behind becoming the top 15 in the world as a uh, ClickFunnels affiliate? So um, <clears throat> I'm happy to go into details as always, but if you're very interested in pursuing this, um, yeah. there is, uh, as being part of this illustrious 15, uh, they had us write a chapter detailing our 
strategies. So there is a new brand new uh, ClickFunnels affiliate bootcamp where I, I lay out, I think it's the 11 steps. I can't remember the title off the top of my head, but it's the 11 steps that got me to 101 paying ClickFunnels affiliates in less than 100 days. And that's like ClickFunnels like big claim is like you can get to the dream car award. We'll explain that in a second, but you can get to this illustrious award, recurring revenue in your business. And if you want to know exactly step by step, you can check out, um, you can get that. It's a free download. It's a free, it's, it's a free resource. Just again, it's click funnels affiliate bootcamp. It should be pretty easy to find online. Um, and there's, uh, there's, a uh, Billy Jean. There's some, some very powerful marketers, uh, Peng Jun, that have also done a Spencer Meacham. So some heavy hitters um, that I can't even believe my name is next to, to be honest. Uh, so pretty cool stuff in there. But again, if you're if you're looking for how it worked, I, it, it comes down to, to market. Like I, I didn't say click funnels for businesses. I said, no, I've cracked the code for how ClickFunnels works specifically for accounting professionals like that. And so I built an, a, my message, my entire webinar, my four secrets to online client acquisition was built my webinar on CPA Academy where I go and I give the CPE credits. And then at the end of it, and I say, you get this irresistible offer where you get my sales master, you get my ClickFunnels templates, you get the bang, 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 bang. You get all these things, all like all my best training when you become my ClickFunnels affiliate. And we signed up, I don't know, like five, 600 people in a year on ClickFunnels with that offer. Um, it was super powerful. So again, I, I don't wanna like harp on it, but it was like, we had a good, we knew our market. We had a fantastic product that a lot of people were already aware of. And we created a message that resonated with why this mattered in their life and how it would help solve a problem that they have. And it works. Is, is that by chance the bit.ly link you provided? Uh, it might be for the affiliate bootcamp. Yes. Probably. <laughs> well, we can have type it for us. I'll put it up on the screen. You can type it in and see if that takes them to the, the location you're talking about there. Cause I, I do know that goes to a funnels website. ClickFunnels related uh, messages there. That's I know uh, when you uh, applied to be on the show, what was that like five years ago? And you finally are now appearing today. I'm, I'm kidding. It was several months ago though. <laughs> so to expect you to remember that, uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. But uh, yeah, someone go ahead and type that in, try it and see what happens. It's something valuable. I can guarantee that much. Absolutely. And then uh, I love, so what I took away from that, Tyler, is something that so very, very few people do. And it's, it's, it's a constant that is in your strategy. And that's what I'm really taking away from this. And you are like beholden in a way to your market in a great way. I mean, you are focused 100%, no matter what it is on the accounting market uh, and the accounting clientele. And that's impressive to me because it's so easy to see that shiny ball and go, yeah, but you know what? Affiliate marketers would really love this. And so would digital marketers and so would digital ad agencies. And you could just go crazy with it. And I think the point for everyone to learn here is that because Tyler was so focused on just one niche, I call it a niche. Um, that's how he became successful. One of the greatest ingredients of becoming successful, you know, the four M's, it's all part of the four M's and just take that to heart. Really, you know, whatever niche you're in target and market to them only and see what happens. Like you said, when you're focused and you have a target, you can actually hit it. And that's a great, great advice. We're getting some comments here. Oh, nope. It's not the affiliate. It's a click funnels free trial. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for tick checking on that. Appreciate that. Yeah. So if you want to check out, uh, I think it's probably then our hundred K challenge and, and what it does, it, it will allow you to, uh, to really just, uh, you know, there's a, a term known as funnel hacking where it's like, hey, if you if you want to figure out how we've like set all of our stuff up and 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 just like understand why it works and how we keep people involved and where all the value, the results come from, the synonym for that. Well, you can come check that out. Like, honestly, we'd love we'd love for anyone to uh, to funnel hack us. I have no problem with that. 
Yeah, I was just reading your notes. Uh, sign up for ClickFunnels and gain access to our 100K challenge. That yep. was the Bitly link. So that yep. was that so cool. just, just on that point, Brian, about knowing your market. So one of the other digital marketing strategies that's becoming increasingly popular is having a Facebook group and having a Facebook group dedicated to a specific niche and yeah. what you're looking to do for that niche. So we we started that. And one of the, um, we didn't start that trend, but we started a Facebook group and we we essentially had, okay, well, one of the questions that came into the group was, what are your growth goals and when do you want to achieve that growth goal by? And what was fascinating about that answer, Brian, is that about 90% of all the people who answered that question said uh, somewhere right around six figures in 12 months. Like, it was just like, it was so clear when we looked at the data, I was like, there's something here that would resonate with our market. So we were like, well, we have to include this as a part of our message. And what it ended up becoming is like, we refer to it as like sexifying our offer. Like you want, you don't say, oh, click funnels for accountants. It's like, no, it's the hundred K challenge. And they're like, oh, that's my growth goal. Oh, this can help me reach it. So I don't mean to go off on like a, a tangent here, but I just thought it was important to be like, well, why is it called the 100K challenge and how does that relate to your market and how does it relate to your message? And it's all uniquely tied together. So what you just said is is sheer genius. It's simple, yet it's genius because this is uh, right down the alley of knowing what your market wants and what a fantastic way to find out what they want by just simply asking them. <laughs> and, then, and then take what their answers were and form that into your marketing message. That is gold, ladies and gentlemen. Please write this down, please. And oh, how simple would it be to set up a Facebook group? And part of their entry, you can set this up if you're not aware of this, like he just said, where you ask, what is it? Three or four maximum questions? Three. three. And then uh, use that as your data to then market to them and people like them. Those that obviously want to join your group and answering those questions are obviously your target market. Uh, unless, unless, of course, the messaging on your group is not good to begin with. But Definitely. Uh, great stuff. Oh, hey, we found something here. Remember this? We, <laughs> we now know the culprit because it is one of my apprentices, Jari Rivera. I have to give him a shout out because this is an amazing young man who is uh, really crushing it with digital marketing, specifically at this moment, Facebook ads. He's doing it with my company. Uh, awesome. I want to give him a big shout out. And for anyone looking for help in that area, Highly recommend this gentleman. Look him up. You see his name there on Facebook, and you had a point to make. Go ahead, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there, so there's three questions on your Facebook group, and I just want to make sure that if you do decide to pursue this strategy, there's um, two tricks I want people to be aware of. The first trick is that when you have this group, uh, well, three tricks. Don't let people into the group who do not answer the questions because they will not engage in the group. Like. Yep. Just immediately decline those people. They they will sap your engagement because they're never going to participate ever. Just don't yes. don't make that mistake, okay? Because once they're in there, you'll never remember who they are, and they'll just be in there forever, and your group is screwed from the beginning. The second thing I want to share is that of the three questions, one of those questions should be an email capture. You should have a free lead magnet that you're offering that would resonate with your group. So we say the five social media secrets for accounting professionals, right? Enter your email address. Now, if they don't give you your email address, but they answer the other two questions, I still let them in. Like, I don't make that a requirement to joining the group. It's like, fine, you don't wanna, you don't want it? That's fine, I have no problem with that. However, the third strategy is we talk about systems, we talk about automating things. Yes. So what you wanna do is you wanna save seconds. Seconds add up into minutes, minutes to hours, hours to days, blah, blah, blah. And one of the best ways to do that is you can make a one-time investment in a software known as group funnels. Okay, it's a Chrome extension and group funnels will automate the process of collecting those email addresses, pulling them into a Google spreadsheet. And as long as you have a Zapier set up yes. where you're now pulling that Google spreadsheet into active campaign or wherever, you can now automate the delivery of your free lead magnet and get them onto your email list. So I know that was some digital marketing like babble speak. But if you can, if you followed along with that at all, like that's, it's one of the most powerful things you can do on Facebook right now. I think we were separated at birth. I'm convinced. <laughs> convinced. Now my geek needle is pegged, bro. Um, 
I was somewhat recently coined the automation master by a, a, per, a friend of mine because I, I live, eat and breathe automation and everything you just said, I was just lathering. This was awesome. Zapier and some say Zapier, some say Zapier. It doesn't matter. Tomato, tomato, um, <laughs> you know, Google Sheets, uh, all of that, the automation, pull it in active campaign. You, you, there you go, baby. Uh, I have a white label version called Peak Connector and it costs the same as active campaign, but you also get my support on top of it. So shameless plug, but perfect timing for it. Um, all of that and oh, so many other things. There's Wufu forms and all of these things that I, I use today. Uh, my scheduler 10 to eight, uh, everything is uh, in there to be automating, to automate my business. It's my system, one of, my, one of the parts of my systems. And then the help with my wonderful apprentices like Jari. Uh, that is part of my systems as well. Oh, we got another shout out here. This was from a while ago, but she said, honestly, couldn't believe that the cost was so low. Super extraordinary value, though. Not trying to gas Tyler up, but honestly, it's real. I've been getting results since we met. That's what it's all about. She said the keyword. She actually typed that in before you talked about results. How do you how do you pronounce her first name? Ine. It's Ine. Ine. Like, I want to say like Renee Ine. Ine. without the R. Yeah, no, Ine is, Ine is awesome. And, uh, Ine, I'm gonna have to go to sleep after this, so you gotta you gotta stop gassing me up. Honestly, like <laughs> I got stuff to do tomorrow, like coach you and help everyone else. And Ugh. this gentleman, Mike Mastriani, is a good friend of mine. We go way back, uh, 12, 13 years ago. Uh, if you're in a network marketing industry at all, you know what it is to have to recruit people. That it can be very difficult to do. This guy is one of the best recruiters on the planet, uh, and he does it in such an integrity-based way. Uh, he's never chasing people. Uh, he's, I'm going to learn a lot from him recently. We just got involved together in an amazing infomercial-based opportunity. Look up his name. It's very unique. As you can see on the screen, Mastriani, M-A-S-T-R-O-I-A-N-N-I. -N -N -I, that's for auto people listening. And look him up on Facebook, reach out to him and say, hey, what is that infomercial company you're part of? Uh, I want to check it out because if you're, work, if you're with Mike, you're going to get the help to uh, build a big organization. And then Jari is coming back. <laughs> Thank you. I say thanks for your gems, Tyler. Much appreciated. Yeah, Jari is the real deal, man. He is an awesome guy. Awesome. And then, <laughs> oh, my gosh, you are really getting me lit. <laughs> I love automation. Y'all flirting with, oh, she is fun. I like, I like her. In a fantastic. Yeah, and I can see why uh, you love Tyler too, in a because he he's an amazing young man. He's achieved so much. Only thirty. Come on, I thought you might be twenty six by looks, but you know that's because you keep keep in shape and you're at that high altitude, right? So, uh, <laughs> bro, we only have two minutes left. This is not right. Um, but I'm not on any time clock, and I know you have nothing but the rest of the day in front of you because what is it, three thirty or four thirty now? 3.30? Uh, 3.30, but I, if you want to go a little longer, Brian, I'm, I'm more than happy to hang out. It's up to you, man. Tyler S. Clark, again, for those of you that just joined or came on later, is joining us right now from the French Alps, where it is 3.30 in the morning. We started at his 2.30 in the morning. That's because he made a commitment, I don't know, several months ago to be on this show and recently started getting reminders that, that the fact that he was uh, committed to be on this show um, and he's human, probably had second thoughts and said, my God, it's going to be two in the morning. It felt, felt like a good idea back then. Now it's like, oh, I'm not so sure. He stayed to his commitment and came on. And uh, I so appreciate that. And it's just a quality, again, of very successful people. That's one of the main qualities. But there is one question, uh, Tyler, before we leave. And I, and again, we're going to give folks a way to connect with you. So don't, sure. don't let me forget that. I won't. Um, and it's one question I like to ask of every successful entrepreneur, which means everyone that's ever been on my show, uh, before we call it a night. And uh, it's it's a really telling question. It's a deep question. And uh, if it takes you some time to come up with the answer, that's cool. There's no horrible thing with dead air time on this show. It's okay. If you need a moment, some will get it instantly. I've seen the whole gamut. But before we do that, I would be remiss if I didn't let people know what I promised in the very beginning is how they can win that five night stay at the five star luxury resort compliments of the big insider secrets. They are watching right now as we speak on this show. And here is how you do it. So before I said, you know, resist the temptation to go multitask. But now both Tyler and I give you permission 
to get out that that other very high tech instrument called your phone, your smartphone, and pull up your messaging app. And when you do that, where you would normally put in the name of the person you're going to send that message off, type in this number, 661-535-1624. And then down in the message area where you would type in your emojis and your message itself, type in the word peak, P-E-A-K, and just hit the send button. Go ahead and do that right now. We pick a winner every single week. Again, you want to send that to 661-535-1624. And just type in the word peak, hit the send little send icon. And again, this is sponsored by our wonderful, wonderful friends over at the big insider secrets.com. So be sure to check them out as well because they have given us a wonderful gift here. They've given you a wonderful gift. And I can't wait to see who wins. Bring it. Let's see who wins. Speaking of winners, right here, that man right there. <laughs> yes, it's always fun. So uh, I kind of built up that question, and I just want to let you know, Tyler, that um, there's there's no such thing as a wrong answer to this question. It, it doesn't exist, so that, that'll help. And then uh, exactly the opposite is true. The only correct answer is yours. It's a personal question. It's not a deep personal question, but it's personal nonetheless. Are you ready? I am. He's, he's curious. You can see him just thinking away. I love it. All right, here we go. Tyler Clark, how do you define success? <clears throat> you know, I have an answer that I was ready to shoot off right then and there, but it's the type of question that requires reflection, even if you're confident in your answer. Because success is what we're all striving for. And I think that's one of the major trappings of trying to define success is that it's almost defined as a particular point in time. So for me, success is like I said, for value, there's synonyms, right? Success is a synonym for progress. Um, I believe very much in the idea of dreams, dream firms, and the representation of what a dream means is that you're capable of imagining something better or something different from where you are. And if you reflect on one of the most powerful statements of all time, I get goosebumps just ever thinking about it almost, bring, it almost brings tears to my eyes, right? I have a dream. And that means something different to everyone, but needless to say, I'm, I'm quoting Martin Luther King. And the power of that statement for changing social justice, to, for changing your personal world, for changing your business, for helping you to change someone else's life, that requires you to have a dream. And when you have that dream, when you have that goal, when you have that target, and you're willing to make progress, even if it feels small, even if it feels insignificant at the time, as long as you're making progress, you are finding success. Stack those pebbles, baby. That's right. I love it. Thank you so much. That was a great, great answer because it was yours. And here's the thing. I've had uh, over 90 uh, guests on this show, and I'm still stunned. No two people have answered it the same way yet. I mean, I expect it to happen someday. Uh, I mean, odds are there. Come on. It's going to happen. The other thing I, I did find very, very interesting, uh, Tyler, because the people that I interview are successful, there isn't one of them that focused completely on money or in some most not on it at all uh, to define success. It was more uh, being free to do what I want. The, the, the answers were everywhere, but they were not money centric. And here's the thing. When you're just starting out in a business, your mind has to be money centric for you to survive and it's okay. So you have permission to be money centric when you first start out because that it's your survival. But as soon as you get to the point where you are able to serve more people because you're making money, that whole mindset shifts and it becomes one like Tyler's where now you're thinking of things like progress 
sacking those pebbles. And that's his definition today. That definition will most likely change in six months, maybe a year from now. It changes for everyone. So there is no one right answer. The only right answer is yours. And it's going to be yours multiple times through your life because it will change. It's a be I just learned so much by asking this one question, Tyler. It's, it's kind of by accident. It's blown my mind. So I'm actually compiling a book with everyone's answers uh, to date. And we'll pull that out and uh, get that published. Of course, I'll get your permission first. I know you don't want the extra exposure, but I'd like to help you in that area. Um, I'm just having fun. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Oh, my gosh. Uh, do you want to... Uh, do you want to um, talk to the dreamfirms.com website at all and give a brief overview of that? Uh, the cobbler's children have no shoes is the honest answer. Dreamfirms.com will ultimately lead you to either the Practice Igniter Challenge, which is a seven-day uh, challenge that we offer to our accounting, bookkeeping, and, and tax clients. That gives them an understanding of online lead generation, effective sales techniques, as well as um, online scheduling, which is uh, something about 80% of the industry currently does not embrace. And when you think about your most valuable resource, it's your time. So um, there's something for everyone in the Practice Igniter Challenge is only 47 bucks. Um, so feel free to check that out if you'd like. There's a chance it drives you also to the Five Shifts webinar, which is a 40, uh, about a 40 minute uh, webinar that we offer that guides people through what we believe are the five fundamental shifts you have to make to be able to systematically add high quality clients to your firm or six figures of new growth year over year. Um, so there are a number of uh, a number of things that we like to offer at this point in our business. That dreamfirms.com website <laughs> will change in the next two weeks dramatically from a simple landing page on ClickFunnels to something a little bit more robust and descriptive of what we have to offer. But um, that's a good place for everyone to start right now. And I love the fact that you have all these testimonials and we've had one uh, repeated uh, tonight live <laughs> from NA and that's been, a uh, oh goodness, here we go. Guess what? Another one. That seven day <laughs> challenge gave me life. Let's go. Right on cue. Phenomenal. Here, You know, this is one of the things I've noticed uh, for successful people as well. And that is they have built up a fan base and they built up raving fans. And that's what NA is showing right now. And all of these testimonies that we just saw earlier. And that is another key to building a successful business. So always work with integrity, over deliver. It's obvious you have, I read those testimonials. Ine is a perfect example. She's just like your, your biggest raving fan of all. And it's phenomenal to have those people. And I can tell that it's a mutual respect that you have for each other. And that's because Tyler gives value. And he, what he means by value is he gives results. And that's important. I, we could go on uh, for another five hours and I want to, but out of respect for everyone, including yourself, probably want to get back, crawl back in bed, maybe take a nap <laughs> after being there. It's almost 4 a.m. in the French Alps, <laughs> Mr. Tyler S. Clark. I cannot thank you enough. What is the best way for folks to get in touch with you? Is it through a website, a Facebook, an email? Honestly, um, I'd say for uh, any accounting finance professionals, join us on the Proactive Accountants Facebook community. We do free trainings every Friday on there, um, free software tools. It's a, it's a blossoming community. There's almost 2,000 active members in there right now. So I'd say for anyone in that space, that's a great area. For those of you who may want to connect, talk a little bit more about even affiliate marketing, how to do that successfully. Um, I'm more than willing to have those conversations, but the best platform would be LinkedIn, Tyler S. Clark. And uh, just another trick, if you put S in your name, first name column on LinkedIn, uh, it allows you to figure out who's using bots and who does not and uh, helps you make more meaningful connections as opposed to um, connecting with people who don't really uh, appreciate what the platform can do. So Please. just some food for thought. So it, your first name is Tyler Space S period? Yes, I'm, correct. Yeah. Ah, I'm going to I'm going to add my uh, middle initial. That's really cool. That's really cool. So, you know, it's nugget after nugget. Um so definitely definitely reach out to Tyler and connect with him. Uh probably the best easiest way is to go to LinkedIn cuz you can see his name on the screen, Tyler S Clark. It's hard to misspell it. It's very straightforward because he's a results oriented guy and you're going to get results when you come and say hi to him. Tyler, I can't thank you enough. I mean, I really mean that for, you know, getting up brutally early 
because I know you had to get up before 2 a.m. to get on this uh, before we got started the show officially. Uh, have nothing but respect for you. Uh, and I, I love the fact that you have these raving fans. And, well, you're welcoming, Nate. Wow, that's nice. Y'all both cool. <laughs> Peace and blessings and massive growth. Same to you. Same to you. Yes. Thank you so much, Tyler. And on behalf of this amazing guy, uh, I want to say thank you all for watching and listening that have been out there watching us live or maybe even later on a recording, whether on video or podcast. We are on 25 different podcasting platforms. We are everywhere. We are doing it the Tyler S. Clark way. We are getting exposure in any and all possible means and formats we can get to. So follow this guy. He knows the secrets to success, the four M's, get to know him and watch your life change. You, There's just too much objective evidence and proof on everything I've seen about him. So definitely get in contact with him and improve your life. Until the next time, I am Brian Kelly, your host of the Mind Body Business Show. This is Tyler S. Clark, the one, the only, the amazing young, young man from the French Alps. We will see you again on the next edition of the Mind Body Business Show. Have a great, great evening and be blessed all. So long for now. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been the Mind Body Business Show with Brian Kelly.